Hello, my name is Paul Tranny, and I want to take you through how to create some just really nice animation using Edge Animate. Okay, Edge Animate allows you to create animation as well as interactivity, but I'm going to use it to create some animation on this scene. In fact, I've imported into this HTML file, by the way, uh, a ping file, which I've done. I have a couple in here. I've drawn a rectangle as that background right there. I've implemented some text just by using the type tool there, typing that in. In fact, this shape here is also a rectangle where I've distorted the corners. So I've done quite a bit here as far as designing this, and I, I think it looks pretty good. Maybe I'll move this up a little bit. Uh, but really, I want to animate all this content moving in. So I want Albert Einstein to slide in. And how I need to do that is by just selecting that ping file. I can see Einstein right down in here this is where I'm going to do most of my animation okay is in this timeline panel so this Einstein right here in fact what I need to do is I'm gonna make sure auto transition mode is on and auto keyframe mode has those lines through it but if I click on it it turns it solid red and now it says hey you know what I'm enabled I'm ready to be animated in fact as I take him and move him off to the left hand side you can see it's created this keyframe. In fact, I can manipulate this accordingly just by scrubbing this way. I can use my properties panel. Again, just kind of scrubbing that out of the way. A number of ways you can position items. But the great thing is, is I'm able to, you know, position him, you know, off of the stage or viewable area. Just like that. Okay. Now what I can do is I can take this timeline marker and I can position this anywhere. So I can scrub in to maybe about a half a second and I can scale this up and down as well. But going in about a half a second, what I can do now is move him back into position just like that. You can see it's created this nice transition. As I move him back, I can hit that space bar and it will play through or even hit this play button right here. But you'll get used to hitting the space bar. You can see him slide in just like that. Okay. In fact, it gives me the coordinates he moves. But uh, you know what? As an animator, honestly, I'm not crazy about how this like just abruptly stops. And uh, what you'd want to do is really smooth this out. And one way to do that is to use easing. So if I click on that easing right there, I can say, hey, you know what? Have him ease out. So as he reaches that second keyframe, have him slow down. And I can even make it more drastic by using these other options as well. Um, let's use this. Let's try this quint like that. Let's try that. Okay, so now if I just hit play, you can see how he zips into place. Okay, Zip, just like that. So again, he's actually most of the way there halfway through that, about a quarter of a second in, but since there's that, that quint associated with it, he slows down nice and easy, okay? And you can always come in and adjust that accordingly if you want to. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And that's what you could do if you want to create any sort of animation. It's really just making sure that's turned on, your auto keyframes on, and start moving it into position as you move down the timeline. But in this case, I have everything at its final position. So I want, I don't want to have to move everything off the stage and then move everything back into place. What I can use is something that actually is pretty unique to Edge Animate, and that's this toggle pin. Okay, so it allows me to create a from and to keyframes within a single edit. So clicking on that, check this out, I get this little pin. And then wherever I put this pin is where the current properties will be okay so if I drag this pin to about a half a second it's going to put all these properties right here at a half a second so now all I need to do as an animator is you know take these objects maybe select both of them and move them down watch what happens when I move them down it automatically starts it at this position that I move them to and animates it uh, to where they were okay so as I scrub through you can see how that builds okay so this is great I personally think the pin tool is great anytime you need to create a build animation which it seems like a lot of animation is so moving that down I can see that animate up and kinda of that text 
melts up out of that. That looks good. I can start to take this text, just to, you know, have fun with it. It's dragging this off to the right, and builds that. I don't have to worry about, it's already in its final position. You know, even taking this, this little leaf, and maybe I want it to um, also turn on. So I'm clicking, in fact, I want it to fade in. I'm clicking right here. That little diamond basically says, hey, you know what, add a keyframe. And that's exactly what it did, is it added a keyframe right there for that rectangle. Okay. In fact, what I can do is I can scrub that down to make that zero. So now he's transparent, and then he's opaque. Okay. So I'm going to hit the play button. You can see everything slide in. In fact, lastly, let's take this background right here. With that background selected, I can do the same thing, which is, again, uh, add that keyframe, scrub down to the zero, and that will fade in too. Okay. So I'm going to turn off this toggle pin tool now that you know how it works and you can see that animation build. It uh, looks pretty good, but what I can also do is start to stagger all of this content out because, um, you know what, I want that background to fade in first. And then I want these other items such as this rectangle to slide up as well as this text. Well, that text, I want it to slide up at the same time. So the background fades in. That panel is going to come up. The text, that quote basically, is going to come up next. So that comes in maybe about, you know, when it's almost done. That kind of slides in. And right about there, maybe I want that other sort of red rectangle to fade in like that. And let's have Einstein in this case. I'm going to take Einstein, and he is actually going to move in through the course of this whole animation, which really only lasts for about a second and a half. So I've just stretched that out. Now I hit the space bar. You can see how that fades in. You can see him move in. In fact, I'm going to push him out even further, kind of like that. And notice how you'll, you might have to scroll this way. Well, what you can hit is the backward slash key on your keyboard and it will adjust to make sure everything fits within your timeline panel and now you can see how that kind of comes in like that 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 in fact let's see kind of where this content starts at again this albert einstein that text let me move that down further like that all right so my animation i think is looking pretty good i'm gonna save this and preview it in a browser. You can see everything kind of slide in. Let's refresh that. You can see everything slide in just like that. All right, notice how you saw stuff that's actually outside of the stage, which is the first thing you'll notice when you're animating. It's because your overflow is set to visible. Now keep in mind I've just clicked on that background there, which is selecting your stage. And then I can change the overflow set to hidden. Okay, now you'll be able to really get an idea for what uh, what's being seen and what is not being seen. So let's just preview this in a browser. Everything slides in just like that. And lastly, what you can do is, again, start to add some of that easing. But you get the idea for animation. Say, for instance, the only... Um, extra the last little piece I'm going to show you how to do which is with this text right here you know how this text kinda of comes in uh, I can go ahead and change that from that cubic which is what I set it to so it applied that to everything else as I animated but I can actually have this set to elastic so it's gonna go beyond its point so it's gonna actually go, gonna go higher and then it's gonna rest into place like that okay so that's what I'm adding even for this text I can do the same thing as just make the text elastic as well. And that just makes it uh, kind of fun. Again, this is something you notice as you start previewing it in a browser or just playing it. Uh, you'll, there we go, notice how that works. Slides in and that zips in pretty fast. So from there I can do a little bit more adjustments to this content. Kind of like that and preview it. But that's how you do animation in Edge Animate. You can see it's pretty straightforward, pretty fun. What it generates is, you know, this this timeline and ultimately content. As you can see, as I start to look on my desktop, it creates a lot of this animation. 
in here as you start to take a look. My elements, my different states, as I scrub down, you can see the timeline and some of the animation that's created, all creating for, created from Edge Animate. And uh, really my next step for this project is to make this content uh, also responsive because I want this content to actually fit in the browser window regardless of size, even if you're on a tablet or a mobile device. So that would be the next step uh, for this project.